Okay, it's recording, so good morning everyone. Starting today, this is how we'll, we will be having our lessons. So we'll be recording uh, a few minutes, uh, prob probably about 15-20 minutes of lesson from my house, which I will then share with you. Now, there will also be written transcripts of the videos, which will include the most important concepts. I might go on a tangent every now and then, but the information you need is on the transcript. Also, I hope the, the mocks went well. I still haven't looked at them. Hopefully, there will be other occasions and uh, hopefully we'll be able to deliver you the content uh, you need in order to do, to do the exams, if and when they happen. Hope they will happen, hopefully. Still, uh, you're going to learn something new, so let's do some history. Now, today we are starting our new unit on the American Civil War and its aftermath, what happens after. So, since this lesson is part of this GCSE module, I would like you to answer an exam question each lesson, and you will need to do that on the Google Forms I provided. Today's question is about the significance of the Civil War. Significance meaning why it is important, why about 150 years later we are still talking about it. You will be required to answer those questions, again, just to be clear, in the Google Forms. If you have any problems with that, write that in uh, in a word file and send it to me by email uh, or write that in a piece of paper take a picture and upload it in the google classroom uh, we live in the age of communication so life finds a way okay no excuses in this case there is also a retrieval task and a number of questions to help you remember some of the things we have talked about in the previous weeks after the two weeks break that we had for the mocks and to consolidate your knowledge of the essential facts that we are talking about today. Again, all the information you need to complete the task is either in this video, in the transcript, or in the notes provided. Uh, another thing, most of the content is also in the notes I have uploaded. Uh, there are some American West notes. I uploaded part one, two, and three. Later on, I will also upload the notes for Health and the People and Elizabethan England and the interwar years. I hope everything is clear. If you have any question, let me know. Now, back to history. As I said, we are going to look at some basic facts about the American Civil War. And then, starting on Wednesday, we will start looking at the causes of this huge event. For today, we're focusing on the five W's of the event, on its significance in the larger scheme of things. There are three main reasons, and we will go through them as we explain the five W's. So, hope you can read. First of all, it was the war with the highest number of casualties in American history, being an early industrial conflict. Second, it decided which kind of country the United States were going to be. And third, it emphasized some divisions within the United States that are still felt to this day, the one between North and South. Let's start by saying what was a civil war, what is a civil war? You probably know this already, but just to be on the safe side. The essential difference between a normal war and a civil war is the fact that while a normal war is fought against an external enemy, a civil war is fought by groups that belong to the same country. For example, the ancient Roman civil wars were fought between generals who wanted to become emperors, Roman generals, and the English civil war was fought by the English king and the English parliament who had different ideas on how the state should be run. The American civil war, similarly, was fought between the, United, the southern states of the United States and the northern states, after the southern states decided to unilaterally leave the Union because they didn't like the way the country was run. We'll go through that in a minute. It was, uh, again, states unilaterally leaving a union like Brexit, but much more violent. Why they decided to do that will become apparent in the, le in the next lessons, but for now uh, should be enough to say that it was a debate over slavery that got a bit out of hand. As for when and where, uh, it was fought in America on the frontier between uh, the northern states and the southern states. We'll see, you have a map 
in the notes uh, that will make things clear. I could go on and describe it, but it's much clearer with the map. You got that in the notes. It was fought between 1861 and 1865. Now, this could be a bit of a dry piece of information by itself, but we're historians, and what we do is we put things in the correct context. And what was going on in the 1860s? The Industrial Revolution. It was in full, full swing at the time, and with it came new, deadlier weapons, new ways of waging war people were not used to. We will study that as well, which included also the first submarines. This can be seen, this new industrial war conducted with industrial uh, weaponry, as a preview of the horrors that would later be unleashed in World War I. As for the who, the two main factions in this war were the Unionists, on the one hand, and the Confederates. And the clue of what each of them wanted, and therefore why the war is significant in shaping the future of the country and the world, because we're talking about a country that will become a gigantic superpower, and therefore influenced the entire globe, a clue for what they wanted is in their names. The Confederates, the southern states, the one with the, with the flag that is like a red, uh, a blue cross with some stars on a red background, was a group of semi-independent states with little or no supervision from the central federal government. Okay, They wanted a weak federal government and they left and they formed a union between themselves. I hope that's clear. They came from the south of the country areas like uh, Florida, Virginia, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> this part of the country had its own economic structures, which were based on plantation slavery and its own cultural traditions. In films and other depictions, they usually wear gray uniforms, but that really depended on the individual regiment. On the other hand, we have the Unionists, the states in the north, that did not want the United States to break down and turn into an even more disjointed Federation of States. Their economy was mostly industrial and therefore the population had strong views against slavery. Okay? The economy of the South was based on slavery and plantations, the economy of the North was based on industrial production, on factories. Okay? They generally wore blue uniforms, but again it depended on the individual regiments. Now, while the main issue around which the war was fought was the legitimacy and morality of slavery, Okay, and uh, that was indeed the main co the main problem, the main issue of the civil war. It was also on whether or not the federal government, so the government in Washington D.C., as opposed to the state governments, the government of the single individual regions and states of the United States, could ban slavery for the entire country. Okay, it was about the so-called slave rights. But the slave right in question was the right to have slaves. If the South had hypothetically won the war, which was almost impossible, but let's be counterfactual, the United States would have been politically, socially and economically an incredibly different country with a much weaker central government. It would have probably not uh, intervened in World War I or World War II. We have no idea, but it's likely. And its role in world history would have changed in unpredictable way. This is one of the reasons why it was significant, because it was when it was decided how the country should be run. Keep in mind also that the divisions between the North and the South are still felt today, and very much so. Many people in the South believe in the so-called Lost Cause narrative, which portrays the Confederates as heroes. Heroes who fought against the tyranny of the federal government, not to preserve the institution of slavery, but in their own eyes, in their own perspective and narrative, to fight against the intrusions of a tyrannical government. Okay, A government that was not supposed to tell people what to do. This is a very American thing, which in Europe we don't have as much. Uh, several southern states uh, uh, still show the old confederate symbols in the state flag. Uh, think of Georgia, I think, for example. Also, interestingly, a map showing how many hate groups, uh, so racist groups, white supremacist groups, were identified in each state, is almost perfectly superimposable with a map of the two factions of the Civil War. 
showing that the legacy of slavery and racial conflict that ignited the, ignited the civil war is still very high in the south. Okay, I put a link to this heat map in the in the transcript of the video. Finally, while we will discuss the causes of the war in the next lessons, uh, I think we should spend a word for the event that triggered it, the election of Abra Abraham Lincoln. You might have heard of him, the guy with the beard and the top hat. Very reductive descriptions, uh, description, I'm aware. Now, he ran his uh, election as president of the United States on, the aboli on an abolitionist platform, meaning that one of his central points was to solve uh, the issue of slavery. We'll discuss it, we'll discuss how and why he wanted to do that when we'll talk, when we'll analyze the House Divided speech, okay, that one of the, his campaign speech, one of the most famous ones. This, of course, was not appreciated by the Southern slave states, which unilaterally, meaning without any form of negotiation, just by themselves, declared their independence from the Union. Tensions were already high, due to the economic differences, due to social and cultural differences, due to different attitudes towards slavery and race. And the election of Lincoln, which had a very specific political program that went against the interest of the southern states, was the spark that ignited the civil war. So, to summarize, what were the three main aspects of significance for uh, the American Civil War? First of all, it was an early industrial conflict, as we said. It happened while the Industrial Revolution was happening, okay? was changing life, was changing production, was changing warfare. And this killed a huge amount of people, an inordinate and unexpected amount of people. Generals were still using the old Napoleonic tactics, but you cannot do that against rifled guns, you cannot do that against Gatling guns, and therefore the death was incredibly high to, I think it was around 700,000 people, according to which historian you ask, 700,000, 680,000. The conflict between all North and South, and that's the second point, eventually decided the fate of the United States of a country, okay, as a country, in terms of how it was run. It could have become, if the South had won, a much looser confederacy of states, with a much weaker central government, unable to take certain key decisions that eventually changed the history of the world, like entering World War I and entering World War II, just to name a couple. And finally, the Civil War showed that there were two halves of the United States, and that there still are. And these two halves had very different economic, social and cultural structure. We had an industrial north, a sort of more racially progressive North, and an agricultural South, much more tied to the ideas of plantation slavery, for example. And uh, very, fr in, very frankly, much more racist as a culture, since the value of a person depended on whether it was black and therefore a slave, or white and therefore a possible slave owner. Now, you should have all the details you need, both in here and in the transcript, to answer the question. So go to the, go to the Google form, answer the question, and show me what you can do. See you next time.